It's great to see you and it's wonderful uh, to be here today. We have standing behind me uh, a very large group of people that have worked tirelessly uh, in the past two and a half years uh, to make the announcement uh, today a reality. Um, so let me just begin by saying uh, that New Orleans and the state of Louisiana deserve a world-class airport. Uh, and now they're going to get one. Uh, where many others have for years and years tried and failed, this team has uh, and it will succeed. And that is why uh, we are here today. I want to thank uh, Nolan Rollins, who has been a great chairman of the Aviation Board, who will soon depart uh, for Los Angeles. He got a demotion <laughs> and has to go to that wonderful city to help them lead it, but we will miss him. Uh, and he has been a great leader for the Urban League uh, and also the chairman of this board that helped lead this planning effort. So, Nolan, thank you very much. You guys give him a round of applause. And then if you'll just hold while I run through this list, Iftikhar Ahmed, who, as you know, is our Director of Aviation, uh, John Young, and members of the Jefferson Parish Council, Mayor Mike Yenny, who has been a great partner throughout, Vijay St. Pierre, the President of St. Charles Parish, uh, Natalie Robotin, the President of St. John Parish, Pat Brister, the President of St. Tammany Parish, Dave Peralta, the President of St. Bernard Parish. Uh, these are our partners in the region that have been critical to creating an economic hub that will compete internationally against other major cities and other major countries. We also have a number of council members with us today. Jackie Clarkson, Nessia Cynthia hedge Morell, James Gray, Susan Guidry. I think that I have, I'm sorry. Uh, and Latoya Cantrell is with us. Uh, we also have uh, some council members from uh, Kenner who have been with us. Both of these teams of legislators have been in constant touch uh, with not only their executive branches but their co-equal legislative branches that have been working through this. Uh, we also have a number of legislators with us. Uh, we also have the board members from the Aviation Board uh, that are with us that uh, help lead this effort. Uh, T. Martin is with us, Doug, Martin, Doug uh, Thornton is with us, um, Cheryl Teamer is with us, Roger Ogden, and the other board members, I can assume everybody's here, right? Um, thank you guys so much for being with us. Uh, Bob Montgomery, who's the Vice President of the Southwest Airlines. Uh, we have Todd Francis, who is the Chairman of the Black Chamber of Commerce, uh, and who will be um, my next nominee to the Aviation Board, uh, to the City Council. Amy Quirk, um, who is with the Mayor's Office of Economic Development, and uh, as I have said, most importantly and as importantly, all of the members of the Aviation Board that have, uh, in the last two and a half years, uh, at our direction uh, and partnership, worked on being able to come forward today and give you a definitive plan uh, that will build a new world-class airport for the city of New Orleans. As you know, uh, this facility that we've been in uh, has been reflective uh, of uh, the city of New Orleans when it was originally built. But for the past 25 years, it has not. Uh, it has not met the standards uh, either from a capital perspective or from a uh, operational perspective. That changed two and a half years ago when this team got to work. Uh, the new aviation board members got to work. Uh, we even have uh, a, an impressive letter from the Inspector General uh, that just told us recently that he's never seen uh, such uh, an aggressive turnaround in an organizational structure and behavioral patterns, uh, and we're thankful for uh, that good housekeeping seal of approval. Uh, it has been a long, long time uh, and a discussion that has lasted uh, for well over 25 years about where we were going to put a new international airport, not whether we needed one. We always knew that we deserved one and it was important. But as you may recall, there were discussions about building this airport uh, out by Bayou Sauvage and into Lake Pontchartrain. There were discussions about whether or not Mississippi, uh, at a particular point in political history, was going to be able to move this airport actually across the line. There were some discussions about whether it was going to go in Baton Rouge, and then most recently there were discussions about building a cargo airport that would eventually turn into a passenger terminal at Donaldsonville. Uh, all of those matters have now been put to rest, and the people of the state of Louisiana, the people of the region have decided that this is the spot. 
uh, that because of New Orleans' geographic proximity uh, to uh, South and Central America and the rest of North America, because of uh, the unique position that New Orleans holds, because of its regional partnership with the parishes, lo and behold, uh, we have enough space on this particular site to build a world-class airport. And of course, we could not do that uh, without the partnership of Jefferson Parish, of Kenner, of St. John's, of St. James, uh, and of course, St. Charles Parish. One of the things that we thought about early on was whether to privatize this airport, because there was some movement around the country to do that. And we had a team that looked at that, and their best advice is that we not do that. And so we moved forward two and a half years ago uh, to ask a couple of questions. Was this the best facility uh, to expand, or should there be a number of different options? We looked at all of them. Uh, and so one of the things that we thought about was effectiveness, efficiency, uh, what having a futuristic airport would look like for not only the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but 50 years, and how the city of New Orleans in this region could, could maintain its capacity to be competitive, not only in an economic development front, but a tourism front. How we can improve customer service. How could we reduce cost, cost and increase revenue? And how could we find a way to really kind of create a signature statement to the rest of the world that New Orleans was in fact and has become the city we always thought that she should be. And so many of you have heard me say that in the year 2018, our 300th anniversary, the city of New Orleans and this region will reflect to the rest of the world and to this nation the beauty that she always should have reflected and that we are beginning now in the city of New Orleans to reorganize our health care delivery system, our education system, our tourism industry, our oil and gas industry, our knowledge-based economy, and now the ability to move people in and out of the city in a way that is reflective of, uh, we think, the best values of New Orleans. So I asked the Aviation Board two years ago to begin uh, to really look at this issue. And for the past two years, in partnership with the Federal Transportation Administration and the FAA, Michael Huerta and his group that we have been in constant touch with, and with the airlines that, I've all, that I have spoken to uh, and partnered with, I asked them to look at a number of different options. They looked at four uh, on top of this facility that we're in. And based on all of the analysis that they've done, um, we have uh, made a decision to actually build a brand new airport on the north side of this facility. It's going to not require any new runways. Uh, it will be a $650 million investment that will be built without any city funds uh, from the general fund or any funds from the state general fund. There will be a small amount that we ask from the state capital outlay uh, on top of the $650 million to do the interchange uh, on the interstate. Uh, and this number is a number that was arrived at in consultation with the airlines uh, that can be funded out of the revenue sources that come from the airport. Uh, and so this is one of these wonderful opportunities where all of the stars align and the people of the city of New Orleans and this region decided to seize the moment uh, that has been missed by us so many times. It will create 13,000 jobs. It will create an economic hub second to none, uh, certainly in Kenner and in Jefferson Parish and for the metropolitan area as we move into cargo. And we also create an industrial park. And it will also be a turnkey operation. So on the day that that new facility opens, this facility will close. And if one weekend you took a plane from this one, the next weekend you'll be, walk, be able to walk over to the new facility. And it is my great hope um, and it is my great wish. It actually is much stronger than that that this airport will be finished by May 5th, 2018 for our 300th anniversary. And so the individuals that are responsible for making this happen have been given the charge uh, to get on with it, to make it happen, and to show success where so many people have failed so that the city of New Orleans and this region can reflect the best. It is, in fact, about the future of the city of New Orleans, not only in terms of what we build, but what it looks like and how it performs. Uh, and I have no doubt that... Uh, when this airport, airport is built, it will reflect the best that a knowledge-based economy in the 21st century will look like for the people of New Orleans. They deserve no less. Uh, it is a standard of excellence that hopefully is reflected in all that we do. Uh, and of course, it would not be possible without all of the people uh, who are here today. So I want to thank them 
Uh, at this point, I'd like to call up Ithakar Ahmed, who is a director of aviation, who has been leading this effort along with the board, uh, after which we'll hear from Nolan Rollins, Mayor Mike Yenny, uh, Bob Montgomery is here from Southwest, um, Southwest Airlines, Henry Coxham, who is the chairman of the NOLA Business Alliance, and we'll have the council members uh, come up and speak after that, and then we'll have uh, the regional and other elected officials. So uh, this is a great day uh, for the people of the region and for the people of, the, of Louisiana. This is a place where 80% of the employment in the state take off from and land in. And so as this region uh, goes, so goes New Orleans, and as so goes New Orleans, so goes the rest of the state. Uh, so we're thrilled about it, and I want to thank everybody for all the work that they've done. Please help me welcome Mr. Iftikhar Ahmed. Good morning. Um, I don't think that this would have happened without this mayor. I was told uh, three years ago that if we wanted to make some progress, now is the time because we got the right mayor and uh, you know we're taking advantage of all of this. I know my board members are going to send condolences to uh, Mr. Francis because it's a working board and they work very hard with us to come up with to do these things and please don't do that. Uh, I would also say that um, in the 60s I think there was a musical chair uh, game going on and that uh, uh, you know when the game was over uh, Houston had a new airport, other folks had new airports, they had it all together and and uh, Louisiana was standing up and they didn't have a chair to sit. I think this with 2008 um, economic downturn, I think there is another musical chair going on. And I hope that this time Louisiana would have a chair to sit and that we will move on with our, the, the way we want to move on with life. And so with that, I would say, Mayor, we're going to do our best for the 300th anniversary for 2018. And so, so thank you for your leadership. Thank, and the board, thank you for your leadership and city council and all the folks that help us every day. So thank you and we're going to do our best. Thank you. Um, first, let me thank uh, the mayor for his leadership and vision. Um, just two years ago, he gave us a charge, and when I say us, I mean the board, and the charge was make this airport operate effectively, make it look like New Orleans, but most importantly, bring a plan to me that is about the future and about leaning forward. And, and what I hope that we've done for this mayor is brought back to him that plan. We've actually reached his challenge and came to him and said, here's the plan. Um, let me just say this, and I also appreciate the opportunity to, to lead, uh, because sitting in the seat that I've sat in for the last two years uh, is an honor. Um, I have been demoted, and I am now completely, as of today, transitioned to Los Angeles. My condolences for me. Thank you. Uh, but what I will say is that um, I have never worked with a more incredible group of individuals than this board. Um, they have been with sleeves rolled up from day one. So the economic impact that's going to happen, the jobs that are going to be created, the businesses that are going to uh, be able to be a part of this new building, the opportunity that this is going to create in an economic downturn is because of, of some really hard working folks. And I would just simply say that um, I'm really gonna miss every single one of you uh, because of your dedication, not to yourselves, but to the city. And what this airport is, is the dedication to the people of the city, the people of the region, and the people of the state. So what I would just simply say is that, Mr. Mayor, I'm coming back on the day that you say it's, it's supposed to be here, and I want to walk into this airport and see uh, the future uh, standing right before us. Thank you for this opportunity. First off, I'd like to welcome everybody to the great city of Kenner. And, we, you know, we're certainly happy. We're certainly happy to house the New Orleans International Airport as we have for decades. And you know, if you, if you rewind 40 years ago when you had a, a Landrew and a, and a Yenny in the mayor's offices in New Orleans and Kenner, they did a lot of growth at this airport. They held, had a lot of expansion. They, they got through a lot of growing pains in the 70s to make this airport what it, what it is today. And now you fast forward to, to where we are today. And you know, Mayor Landrew could have picked a lot of projects throughout the city of New Orleans that could have been great legacy projects for him. But he looked at a project that not only affects the 
city of New Orleans, but affects this entire region. He looks at a project that affects Parish President Brister's people on the North Shore as far as uh, Parish President Robottom's people in St. John. Uh, it's a total regional project that is going to bring a lot of economic growth into this area. My economic development team is wholeheartedly behind this. We want to see something happen to the Veterans Corridor. We're already in the process of making that corridor look good to make this area inviting to people that will come to the new Louis Armstrong International Airport. I want to thank my CAO, Mike Quigley, who meets with uh, the director of Takar Ahmad monthly and has meetings with him to, on what we can do to keep things going right at this airport, along with Councilwoman DeFranches and Councilman Carroll, who meet regularly with them. Uh, Councilman Ben Zahn from Jefferson Parish, who's also here with us today, has been a, a major advocate of trying to do some economic growth in this area. And this is this is where, where we are today. And I want to especially thank Jim Hudson, who's Kenner's rep on the aviation board, because he will certainly watch out for Kenner's best interests, as I know Mayor Landrew has. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Bob Montgomery. I'm Vice President of Airport Affairs with Southwest Airlines, and I've had a, a relationship with New Orleans that goes back almost 30 years. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Yenny taught me to love crawfish in his backyard. He taught me the benefits of it. Uh, over the last two years, we have been engaged by the fantastic uh, airport administration you have here in New Orleans to take a look at what needs to be done. Everybody knows something needs to be done and they've laid out several alternatives. The mayor, the board, the administration has said that their vision for New Orleans is this new terminal. And having been involved with so many projects, I can tell you that this can be done. It is feasible. We can partner. It can be done in a way that protects low fares and that advances travel into New Orleans as opposed to hurting it. So I thank the mayor for his vision, the board for their vision, uh, Mr. Ahmed for his vision and his whole administration. Southwest Airlines wants to partner with the city of New Orleans on this project, and we thank you for extending your hand and inviting us in. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, and on behalf of the New Orleans City Council, I'm Jackie Clarkson. It's a privilege to stand here. It's all been said, thank you, Mr. Mayor, again, from your council for your leadership. I'm personally the, probably the only person here that was here in 1946 when it opened. And I'm proud and I'm proud to admit it. I was here with Chet Morrison, my father Johnny Brechtel, and remember it well. And remember the visions they had. And some were seen carried through and some were not. And I remember the entire Yenny family that were friends of the Brechtel family and the history that went from the whole region into this airport. So for me to stand here today and represent a council that's been proud to support our mayor in his vision and his leadership, I can reflect on the last 70 years and say thanks for the success, thanks for representing generations of a region, and thanks for the memories. Good morning. Uh, I'm Cynthia Hedge-Morrell, and I have the privilege of chairing the airport committee for the C City Council of New Orleans. It's been my pleasure for the last four years to work on the project that has come to fruition under this wonderful mayor. We were really very small in our thinking four years ago, and we dealt with the possibility of a state takeover. To be here today with this mayor and his vision, to look at the, the great possibilities, and I do believe that it will be ready on time because I know that when he said the streets would be ready on time for the Super Bowl, it happened. So I am sure that for our 300th anniversary, we will have this grand spanking new airport. But I, don't, I think that the city of New Orleans and the metropolitan region really d understands now that we work together. This is going to be an economic engine. It's going to be long-term jobs, short-term jobs, but it's also going to be the future growth of the city of New Orleans. So on behalf of the city council, and particularly the airport committee, we are so excited, Mr. Mayor, to work with you on this project.
Good morning, I'm Henry Cokesom. I'm chairman of the NOLA Business Alliance, New Orleans Public-Private Partnership for Economic Development. Uh, on behalf of the business community, this is an exciting, fabulous opportunity for us. What it does for the region is provide 13,000 new jobs. It provides a revenue stream for the region, for the city of Kenner, for the airport, it provides a lower cost of employment. It is a win-win. I am delighted to be here. I want to thank the mayor, the city council, the various parish presidents, and most of all, the business people that are here. Revenue stream is up 35% for those entrepreneurs. It will double once we get all of our businesses behind the TSA area. Thank you again. I look forward to being here five years from now, celebrating the success of our region. Think jobs, think revenue. Yes, a little earlier. And most of all, let's visit our airport and shop. But when we look back at where we're headed, it's about tourism. We've had 9 million tourists this year. We aim to have 13 million tourists by the year of our 300th anniversary. Thank you. Now, if the car keeps laughing about that deadline, if the car, let's be clear, that's a real deadline, okay? That's a real deadline, and you should treat it as such. Um, we know what hurricanes can do to timelines, but short of a Category 5, May 5th. 2018. On time, on task, and under budget. Um, listen, this would not be possible, of course, without uh, a cross-parish partnership. So we have a number of elected officials here from other parishes. Uh, President Brister um, is going to make some remarks, and we have council members, both from Arlene's and Kenner. They have been working very, very closely together uh, and in partnership. And as I have said to you, I've had a chance to speak to all the parish presidents in the area. I've spoken to the presidents of the three major airlines that use this facility. Southwest has 40 percent uh, in this particular space, and they've been great. I've spoken to the president of Delta Airlines. I've spoken to the president of JetBlue. Um, they're all excited about the possibility of this major infrastructure improvement that's going to create uh, the economic success that we've had. So uh, with that, let me call up the elected officials who wish to speak a moment, then I'll close out, uh, and then we'll get to work. Uh, Pat Brista, please. Thank you. And then after that, if you guys will just come on best. Thank you, Mayor, and it is so exciting to be here for, for this news. We uh, couldn't be happier, and on behalf of the uh, 250,000 residents of St. Tammany who are potential passengers here at the airport, uh, we want to thank you for your vision. Thank you for uh, letting us be a partner uh, in this uh, endeavor, and we will always be there, and we appreciate your help. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Susan Guidry, and I'm very proud to be a part of the New Orleans City Council at this time and the New Orleans government and to join with our regional partners in making this really historic announcement. And I would just like to add to everything that's been said uh, that I know we just recently announced major renovations to this airport, and one might be wondering what will happen to those. I want you to know we have, in this day and age, become green and those, those uh, renovations were and are being made with the future in mind. So various of these will be repurposed or reused or recycled for uh, the new airport that will exist. So uh, I, I just wanted to express that very green statement about what we're doing here. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mayor. As our economy continues to grow, it's very important for all of us to unite behind this very important, larger and more modern terminal, which will become the strength of the uh, New Orleans area. In addition to the uh, intermodal uh, cargo capabilities, uh, they would only add to our thriving economy. And in St. Charles Parish, I know that this project will provide jobs and, and additional tax monies to St. Charles Parish. So I want to commend the mayor, uh, Director Ithaca and all the aviation board members for moving forward with this very important project. Thank you. Thank you, VJ. Good morning. It's, a, it's very important for our citizens to understand 
the, the funds that has been generated uh, to make this project possible cannot go, go towards fixing street lights, cannot go towards paving and repaving our streets. This is a self-sustaining, self-generating project that will pay this city and our region forward. So I'm excited. I appreciate the mayor's leadership and fortitude, and I look forward to getting to work to make sure that our new airport is ready to provide outstanding service by May 2018. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the mayor for this and, and the rest of the, the aviation board, the leadership. But one thing we need to be clear about, you do well, one, if you have a great leader, but you really do well if you have a great people. And we in this region have a great people. We are going to do great things. There was a contest in 1945 over a mail contract from Miami to D.C. And Atlanta won that contest and, and it gave them a big head start but they're not out of sight with this we're going to catch up and make up ground watch us good morning everyone my name is maria de Francis. i'm from the kenner city council and with me i have councilman keith reno we're so proud to be here this morning mayor landry thank you so much for coming to kenner the other day and talking to all the council members and our mayor as well as uh, as Councilman um, Ben Zahn from Jefferson Parish, to include us. It's working together that we all move forward. If one part of this region fails, we all fail. And it's your vision to make all of us come on the same page, working together as a unit that's going to make this a success that it will be. Your vision is imperative for the Kenner moving for New Orleans, excuse me, moving forward. And we have a parallel project in Kenner as well. We're going to move, move forward with you and we're going to make this a great, great region. Thank you again and we appreciate everything you're doing for the entire region. Good morning. I'm Keith Reno, Councilman, District 3, City of Kenner, and I just want to say, uh, you know, it was a historic moment this uh, this past week when uh, Mayor Landrew came to the uh, uh, City of Kenner and uh, announced to us the, the plans and the vision that he had. Uh, they say springtime is a plan is a is a time for uh, planning and planting, and we certainly are planting the seeds of greatness for our area right now. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of uh, wrap-up remarks. Number one, uh, I want to thank uh, Council Member Guidry for uh, raising the issue uh, of the $350 million investments that have been made in this building. Uh, they have been put to great use, and they will continue uh, to be put to great use, and they were spent in a way uh, that took into consideration what the future of this particular site uh, is going to look like. So that was the first down payment and a great investment that I'm sure everybody agrees uh, was done very, very well. And we have gotten great uh, accolades for the work that the Aviation Board has has done and you, uh, Iftikhar, through the Super Bowl, y'all performed exceedingly well. Secondly, I want to thank Council Member uh, Cantrell and Gray uh, for speaking to the issue of uh, whether or not these funds could be used for anybody else. So let me repeat this uh, for all of you who are listening. First of all, all of the funds uh, that will be used to build this new terminal will be generated from revenue sources within the airport and could not and cannot be used for other general government purposes like filling potholes, fixing street lights, creating early childhood uh, education opportunities or otherwise building schools. All of the revenue uh, has got to be generated from here and stayed in here with the exception of uh, some capital outlay funds that will be used uh, to help build the transportation uh, ingress and egress uh, and a couple of other ancillary things. Um, Bob from Southwest knows as much about building terminals as anybody in the country and all three of the airlines that are the primary users feel very confident that this plan is not only doable uh, but will in fact be done uh, given the size and the scope uh, that we've determined. Uh, two other main points. Number one, as you talk uh, in the city of New Orleans, we focus a lot on NOLA for life uh, and making sure that the city of New Orleans and the region remain safe. And one of the tenets is creating jobs. So if you just think for a minute about what this team has put together in partnership with the state, you have a medical complex uh, with the Veterans Administration and the universities going up, which is a $3 billion investment that is going to create in excess of 12,000 jobs. You have the major investments that we're making in rebuilding 
all of the drainage and sewer systems that uh, we have been working on that are going to create another 13,000 jobs. And this major economic development effort, which we expect, uh, will create another 13,000 jobs. That gives us a chance to put the people in New Orleans, the surrounding parishes, and Louisiana back to work. Secondly, this makes great economic sense. Right now in this building, although you cannot see it, uh, the expenses and the costs are very high. Uh, and the revenues are lower. This new model is actually going to flip that on its head uh, and it's going to keep the expenses low, especially for the airlines, and make sure that the revenues are high. And that model is something that is consistent with the planning that we've done uh, from the beginning. This obviously is an investment in the future, uh, and at the end of the day, it's about putting people back to work. And yes, Henry, it is about tourism, because we will move from 9 million to 13 million, but it is also uh, about corporate travel. And it's about leisure travel for families as well, because this will be the home port for everybody's uses as they travel, uh, as the 21st century allows us to do. So with that, uh, I thank all of you. I just uh, have one more thing to say. Today is the last day that we will refer to the New Orleans Hornets as the Hornets. Uh, as of tonight, they will be the Pelicans. And I want all of you to remember that, uh, because New Orleans has a new name, a new vision, and a new future. So with new Surgeon Water Board, new Medical Center, new airport, and a new basketball team, does anybody doubt in the year 2018, at our 300th anniversary, that we will be on the top of the, every list that matters? God bless you all, and thank you very much.